Right, so with everything else done, I'm going to have to go down the edge now because it's, it definitely needs to be approached in a far different way to how you'd approach it in the summer. You know what I mean? As soon as it gets warm, I'm all about finding, you know I mean, pretty much the shallowest water I can find that there's no, well, there, there probably is a limit, probably sort of six inches would be about the shallowest, but in the summer you're after that really shallow water where they're going to come in. Now it's very, very unlikely that they're going to come in that in any numbers, if at all, if I'm honest. So what I'm after now is finding uh, the right depths from the day where I think they want to feed. Do you know what I mean? From whatever's um, I've, I've learned from fishing my long line can be brought onto my inside line and I can go from there to sort of what I found the fish want to behave on my long line. That's what I'll transfer onto my, onto my short line if I haven't lost you with that one. So what I've got covered down this edge to me, right? Obviously, I'm, I'm always going to go that way because I'm going to go to where the features are. That's where they're going to want to be on a day like this. Everything's going to want to be uh, hiding under cover. Uh, just comfortable waking up where they want to be, sunning themselves. So I've got two rigs to cover that, or two rigs for covering that feeding. I've got my four foot or four and a bit foot rig for covering the bottom of the slope, but I've also gone for a second one, which I've gone for probably just under three foot, and that's just off my far bank cover. Uh, sorry, me, me marginal cover. So I've got two areas of that slope covered where the fish could potentially want to be. You know what I mean? From what I've learnt on my far line. I'm fairly happy that there are going to be plenty of fish still feeding in four foot. That there's plenty of fish out there and there's not too many problems with too many liners, which makes me think that they don't really want to be really shallow and feeding today. So my two feeding lines, um, say so covering nose depth, I'm going to start on my deeper one, but I've also got another option covered in case too many fish come into my peg and I need to move up the slope, or I've got it wrong and they do not want to be in that deeper water. They want to be in there right against the shallow and I don't catch in the deep. But we'll come on to that in a second. Um, uh, how we're going to feed them and how I'm going to start them and how I'm going to plumb them up more importantly. The last thing that I've actually just assembled, because I've had a little sneaky go down there already, or almost just through through visibility, through watching what's going on down there, there are a hell of a lot of fish today, which is again, so typical for this sort of weather, this time of year, um, sort of waking up and hiding really shallow in the vegetation and against these aerators, against the snags, they're just sitting there sunning themselves. And in that situation, without doubt, dobbing can be frightening. So I've whizzed up a quick dobbing rig set there, at probably about a foot and a half, nearly two foot, just for if the fish simply don't want to go down at all and don't want to feed. It might be that I catch some great big fish or a lot more fish by dobbing around those features at this time of year than I will actually feed in. So I've got that option covered. I've not had a go on, on that yet, but I definitely feel through what I'm seeing, there's definitely a few fish to be caught there dobbing. But there's a few little changes I'm going to make as opposed to dobbing bread. I'm going to use some different baits, just to get, again, the silver fish issues that, issues that we've been having. I want to avoid them when I have a dob. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stick on my heaviest rig, or my, my deepest rig rather, and have a little plumb up just to show you exactly where I want to find on that slope and the different points that are best targeting. Right, so we plumb it on. So obviously I've already had a, a little bounce about here. I know exactly what I'm trying to find. What I want to show is the two different points or the, the reasons I've chose certain areas. Because I know that with my deepest rig that I've gone in with, so what we're going to say, we're going to say it's about four foot. I know that there I'm finding that depth, yeah, which is pretty much the bottom of the slope. I can go to the left a little bit more, which might actually hide me float behind that aerator for, for the cameras, but it, it does drop a little bit more there, and then it gets on the really nasty bottom where it's soft. So I want to come just onto that slope where it is still, where it is a, a, a bit of a gradient, and I know I'm on a much harder bottom then. So that's my deepest line. So it also coincides with being nice and close to the aerator, which benefits it for getting possibly a few fish off that area. So my second line that I've plumbed up, just to give myself more options in variation of depth, it's tight against that cover. As you can see, it's pretty much a foot and a bit shallower. I mean, I've got a lot less water there, which gives me the option if the fish want to be in that shallower water or they want to be against this cover to the bank, then the two options are covered. Depending on what them fish want to do, I can just swap between the two, work out what's best, or I've always got one or the other as a fallback if the, the original line that I choose to start on, which is going to be this, doesn't work. Other than that, it's about keeping it simple. You can see that between the two, the two pegs, I said that's me. Is that it? That's me shallower line. You can see if I just keep on moving out, it's just a lovely slow gradient, which is the, the best edge possible, pretty much for fishing on. See that just keeps on going and going and going and going and going until it's where we're going to fish there. So that's a lovely, nice little slope that my bait's going to stick to. But it does mean I've got to put my rig in in very specific ways to make sure it's nice and tight that I'll come on to in a minute. But so that nice gradient there is going to make sure my bait, when I feed it, pretty much stays in place. So obviously you're sort of controlled by the, the, uh, the gradients of that slope that you're going to find down your edge 
in how far your rigs are apart. You may find in some situations that that a foot maybe two foot apart. But as long as you cover the two different points and give yourself an option in depth, then you're still going to cover all your bases just in case you you're not quite sure where the fish want to be today. I thought I had a bite there. I thought one bumped into it then. But with that, I'm happy how it goes. Happy with my two lines plumbed up and both options are covered. So what I'm also going to do, because I have got two different depths there, what it leads to is that I've got options of feeding. I mean, very similar to what I was talking about when I was fishing out. When I've got a volume of water, which I have on my, um, on my left hand line as I'm looking at it, I can potentially lose feed there and there is an option of fish potentially feeding through the water. So because of which I'm going to choose the right baits for potentially doing that. I'm going to choose corn, pellets. I mean, something that's going to sink nice and slow that I might be able to still catch fish through the water with because there's enough water to do that there. On my inside line, however, I'm going to feed that completely different if I end up using it. And on that line, I'm just going to feed little small parcels of micro pellets or something that's going to create a much more accurate pile on the bottom. But it's also going to get down there much quicker, simply because that's what I need to do um, in that shallower water. Because the fish, um, they haven't got the option of really intercepting bait because it sinks so quick. Because there's only probably two and a half, three foot of water there, so it'll get down a lot quicker. So there's less chance or it's, it's more difficult to catch fish through the water on my shallow rig than it is on my deeper rig. So again, with, with both giving myself options in depth, I also give myself options in different ways of feeding, potentially different baits, again, just to keep everything covered, just in case we're not sure what's gonna go on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start on my deeper one. As I say, I've had a couple of sneaky little goes on this already. And what I've gone with, I've gone with corn and thingies on this one, corn and air pellets on my deeper one. So I'm going to put a tiny little piece of corn on, so it's probably my favourite margin bait of all. Fishing a bit of corn down the edge. I'm going to put a little pinch of four mil pellets in, probably about 10 or 15 pellets and two or three pieces of corn. Not a big fan of feeding a massive amount of, amount of corn, but I am very partial to having it on the hook. Just simply because whenever I'm fishing in this situation where I've got a lovely, a lovely sloping bottom, it's a great big fish just got upset there. Yeah, because I've got that sloping bottom, um, the corn will tell me if I've got things wrong. If I've gone uh, slightly off my mark and I'm in, I'm in water a little bit too deep, a little bit deeper than my rig, then my corn's going to tell me. My corn's going to uh, show up on my float. Let's have a bit of bait in there, right in line with, with Rich, who is currently messing up my far bank marker monumentally, but he's allowed, he's the boss. So what I want to do, in fact, I've put my little pile of bait in. I'm going to relay that rigging again now just to, to show you properly. So because I've got that slope running down, the last thing I want to do is put any of my rig, as I'm looking at it, to the right-hand side. Yeah, I don't want to be uh, putting any line on the bottom and causing a slack line in my rig. So by swinging my rig right out into the slightly deeper water, then just put my float in right in line with my mark and holding it tight like that, what it'll do it'll sink on a tight line all the way down. It'll be a nice smooth curve all the way down. But when it settles, as long as I pull in this way a little bit, I don't know if I had a bite then, I can't see. That's it, love, go that way a little bit so we can see. If I pull my thingy, if I pull my float nice and tight, it'll show me that my corn is actually on the bottom. Whereas if I pull it into the bank and my float remains the same, it, it doesn't go any lower. Then it'll mean that my corn's been suspended off the bottom. So you see my float's gone really, really low there because I'm probably just on the edge of where I need to be. So I'm just going to pull on that down and see how my float goes even lower again. And that tells me that my corn is on the bottom. So we're having a quick check like that. I know it's on deck. And hopefully I'm going to see a bite as soon as it happens because my rig is so tight. I say exactly the same as the the long line on this one my feeding will be almost identical in the way that I introduce bait uh, to begin with I put my pile in so because I'm so close to a feature I would imagine that it's even more likely that there's going to be some fish uh, willing to to feed on that bait with just a small pile going in straight away initially but if needs be later on after I've caught fish or if nothing happens I've got the option of feeding in exactly the same ways as I did on the long line by either tapping a bit of bait in slowly with my cup and trying to track them that way or even getting catty out so just because i'm down the margin doesn't mean that there's not an option for pinging some pellets there or pinging whatever amount of bait little indication then 
just to try and make something happen. I mean, it's no, the fish are exactly the same as what you're catching out long, so why feed any different for them if you've got the, the same situation down there? So hopefully at the minute, it's still very, very early to make any decisions, but at the minute, the fish definitely aren't rushing into the bait. I'm not getting a, an immediate response as soon as I put any bait in. So I'm really happy that, to begin with, this is the right peg to be on. I mean, there's no need to go tight in at the minute. That'll happen later on, or that, that could happen if uh, I start getting lots of indications on this line and I'm not putting anything in the net. The fish simply don't want to go down in that depth. They want to stay a little bit higher or they want to be a bit tighter to this cover on my right. That might be when my next line comes in. So by always starting on the deeper line, you give yourself your best chance of sort of learning about your bag, about sort of understanding what's happening because at least you get indications at, at the very least if there's fish down there. So if there's no indications on this one, it's very unlikely to be any indications on the, the shallower line as well. There's just probably nothing willing to feed down your edge if that's what's happening. So this, by starting on this line, it gives me somewhere else to go and a way of fixing problems if they occur. We shall see. So I'm going to give this a little bit and I'm going to repeat exactly what I did on that long line. And if it doesn't happen, if I'm struggling to get bites, so what I touched on before was my third option, which could definitely be the what's happening today. After having a little sneaky go on it, it is really clear that there's a lot of fish wanting to hang out just underneath this aerator, another floating island further on, just because they want to get warm today. I mean, they want to sit under, underneath features because they obviously they haven't got eyelids fish, so they don't want to be in the direct brightness of the of the sun. So by sitting under these aerators or whatever whatever other features you have, see that's actually knocking a bit now that aerator it's a really, really good chance that that's where the fish are going to be and that's where I'm going to catch a few today, I think. So I'm going to give this another five minutes. I say if nothing happens, I'm going to catch a few, few dobbers, try and nick a few dobbers if I possibly can, and then I can go back to feeding. I mean, catch a few fish that are sulking, and as the day progresses, as it gets later and later, that's the better time that I'm going to get when they're actually going to put the reds down and have a little feed as soon as the, the light starts to fade a little. Right, well that took quite a while, but all the time it gave me little tiny indications to tell me why. Right, that they weren't really clear line bites or anything, it just let me think, yeah, there's some fish in that area, so, so it is a case this time, it's realistic expectations of what you're actually going to catch. But by being nice and patient on that deeper line then, so eventually, I think it's took about three and a half minutes, we've had a bite. So again, just as the, the far, uh, the open water did, that gives you somewhere to go straight away, it's a little calf that one as well. So once you start getting a few indications by reading the signs that you're getting, to let you know that yeah it's worth putting a bit of time in on this because something's gonna gonna go in a minute, then eventually we've caught a fish. So I'm well happy with that. So the, the last thing I want to do, I want to have a little go for the cameras. So I haven't had a go yet myself, a sneaky go. I do want to have a go dobbing just to see if that sort of reinforces what I'm thinking, that them fish, they, they don't really want to feed. There's the odd one still having a chew, but I definitely believe that there's a lot of fish around these sort of features, maybe up the edge, that I can catch dobbing. I'm going to have a little play with that now just to show you if that's right or wrong. Right, quickly, I'm not going to go too much in detail on, on my dobbing rigs. We've covered that a million times before on videos. But what I've got, I've got a quick 4B14s float. So the reason I've got a little bit heavier than uh, what I'd normally do, and I've got it set um, a foot and a half. Yeah, foot and a half, nearly two foot. But so I've gone with a 4 14s because I've got a great big length of line. I've probably got about four and a half foot of line in between my float and my pole just because it's open water. I mean, it's not something that I'd normally do um, on a snake lake because I need to put it in all the little, the little pokey holes. But in open water, so especially today, I need to flick it right the way uh, away from my pole tip, away from the shadow of my pole, just to uh, uh, prevent them uh, spooking quite as easy. And bait-wise, I'm going to go with corn instead. Instead of the usual bread, which I think will catch a roach very, very quickly, what I'm going to put is a little corn skin on. So I've just literally got a piece of sweet corn, squoze it to death, got rid of all the middle bit, and I'm left with just the the skin of the corn, and that gives me a lovely bait that flutters down nice and slowly through the water. Exactly the same as dobbing bread, but a bit more durable, and less chance of too many roach catching it. 
he says, but I'll probably catch one straight away as soon as we go in. So I'm gonna have a quick look. So I'm really fancying that aerator because they've been they've been knocking like mad on that. Here we go. Oh, they, they knew I were coming then, didn't they? So they've all just spooked off the aerator. It might take a bit longer to get a bike now. But I'm gonna put one more tube up back of it. What I'm gonna do, I wanna be quite careful with my shadow. I don't wanna be casting too much shadow on my actual, um, on when I'm fishing. But just by flicking that corner, I'm gonna start on the outside point, and then I'm gonna try the, the inside point in a second if I don't get a bite. Just by flicking that corner, and hopefully that'll sink lovely and slowly. And if there are as many fish as I think, just sitting underneath that aerator, that's gonna give me the best chance of catching them, just because it's a long way for them to go, for them to drop from six, eight, ten inches deep to four and a half foot. So they just won't want to do it. They want to be right in the shallow water today. And I think that's where I'm most likely to catch them. But I may be wrong, I have been a lot of times before. So I'm just going to keep antagonising them, try and get them to, to snatch at that bait as it goes past. So again, I've got to be really mindful of that shadow. Though The last thing I want is that shadow waving over that aerator too much they pick up on it so quick. It's no different to a, a bird flying over the water and you're seeing all the fish scattering. So it'll be exactly the same if I wiggle that pole about too much. They're gonna get very, very spooky and there's gonna be almost no chance of getting a bite. So I thought I'd have had a, an instant one on that. It's quite surprised me that I've not had one straight away. Could all be facing the other way. I'll give it a second and I'm gonna drop it the backside of this air data. See if we catch one on that side. So there'll be a direction that they're all sitting in, I'd imagine. I've just got to work out where they want to be. So I've not had a bike there, so I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to go in here. Can't see me float very well there, so hopefully Rich will tell me if I get a bite or not. Let's see if there's any hanging at the back of it. So I've got to be a bit careful. I've got a, the cord of the aerator, the cable, if you like, that goes from where I'm fishing out to the bank. But as long as I keep my pole nice and low and I ship back quick, we should still get them out. I'll probably, I'll probably lose it now I've said that. Proper fancy that for an instant one. I think I just scared them a little bit too much wiggling that pole about. So again, just like everything else, it's just another option to have covered because you you just don't know. The, this time of year, they're so unpredictable. You just have no idea at what's actually going to be the best method. And then as soon as you find it, because the conditions are so changeable, it changes halfway through the day anyway. So you, you have got to be so flexible in what you're doing this time of year just to, to make sure you make the most of it. Right. Well, there's a load over on that other one, but definitely that, it's just wrong. Yeah, I honestly thought, I'd have bet me like that dobbing a few around that area to the caught with some fish. I'd honestly put it down to them being so spooky. Let's see, as soon as I shipped over there, first cast, as soon as my shadow passed over it, the fish are spooked. It's, it, it just shows nothing wants to feed. All they want to do is sun themselves and get really warm. It's what I'd want to do in this weather. So in that situation, obviously now I just revert back to my feeding lines and that's where I'm going to catch. I mean, once dobbing, hasn't worked initially for me, it's out the window. It'll either work straight away and it'll be phenomenal or it's not gonna happen. So I completely abort that in this situation. So it's, there's no rules to what's right or wrong. Anything could potentially work. All depends on what mood they're in and, and the situation of the peg itself. But other than that, I'd say, again, it's just about showing you how flexible you need to be. Make sure them options are covered, different ways of feeding or even not feeding if you wanna have a little dob. And hopefully that way, again, I keep saying it, but that will hopefully lead you to catching what's available the most you can possibly catch out your peg instead of spoiling it by making silly decisions. But so hopefully it'll be a bit, a bit warmer next time we go out. I'll be able to catch properly doing this. Yeah. 